So the A1 by itself is great, but with the AMS, it really takes it to another level. So let's go ahead and put it together. And it's actually much simpler than it looks. We have the stand, which it is called officially AMS Lite. It's a pretty simple stand with some rubber feet underneath. Here we have the main mechanism, which we have the extruders here. And there's little buttons you push to release the extruder. The filament will feed from the bottom on all sides there. And we have color code here. We got orange and green. And that's going to correlate with the holders themselves. Like we can see here, that's orange. So orange is going to go on the orange shaft. And they just literally click in. So let's go ahead and do that. Green. And you do kind of have to twist them around for them to line up. And once they do, they click in and they are kind of spring loaded if you guys can see that they roll but then they kind of roll back so every time i guess the filament retracts it kind of takes the spool back too so that's pretty clever actually and also multiple spools can fit on here as this is all flexible and springy so yeah very excellent thought through design and on the top we can see we got labels it says one two and then three four here too so yeah and obviously you're going to line up one here with this extruder here when you're putting the filament through so the machine knows which one is which and so to install this you just simply set it over the foot and i just realized on the back of here there's quite a bit more information if it might be interesting to somebody but it does run on 24 volts 0.5 amps so yeah this bottom part here is just literally going to line up on top there and it kind of falls in right into its place and then we got some of these little bolts or screws that say for ams and there's two on each side that we're going to thread in to hold it all together. Now the other side. And our AMS is assembled. So we do have a wire here. And it's not too long, looks like about a couple feet. And that's gonna plug in in the back of our printer, which if we flip it around, you guys can see in the back we got a couple plugs and looks like it can not handle two of them and theoretically you can plug it into either one but all the pictures show this side here closer to the edge so that's what we'll plug. And the instructions explain everything, pretty much what we went through. And also connecting the PTFE tubing is pretty simple, but there is one thing to keep in mind. And that is that on this end where they're packed together, two of the PTF tubings are longer. And so the longer ones are going to go farther away and the shorter ones are going to go closer. And so there is no right or wrong, just longer goes on the farther away part and the shorter and closer to the printer. And this is just like inserting anything else. There's couplers here, insert it and that's it. And it should hold it together on all of the sides as you guys can see there. So yeah, as you can see the even flow here going towards the printer. Now on the print head itself, I'll lower it down just a little bit here. I do have the single printing tube in there so we can pull that out. And I do have some <laughs> filament in there so probably should have took that out first. And obviously we probably should remove that as we don't want extra weight for no reason. And here we can see that we have a little spacer and the four outputs which should be very similar in length. They might be a little different but should be close. But we're just going to simply click them all into the AMS splitter here which has the four inputs. These don't really matter where they go as this is just a funnel into one but you do want to try to put them as straight as possible so they're not all too tangled between each other. But yeah you just simply plug them in just like that and then here on the spacer we do have an extra slot for this wire that also slots in and holds it all together. So yeah I think that's pretty good. So we got to make sure that our AMS is close enough where the nozzle can go all the way that way which you can easily do that as you can see and yeah that's pretty much how you install this thing and it looks really interesting and unique for sure and gives us the ability to print with four different filaments or materials or colors so let's go ahead and power on the printer and the ams actually lights up there's little lights right here maybe you guys can see them kind of blinking of hey there needs to be filament in there and speaking of filament this was also in the box and i'm not sure if every printer comes with this but mine did and these are actually oh look at that there's a new firmware available so i guess let's go ahead and update so i updated it once so this is the second time i'm updating so yeah these are actually samples that bamboo lab includes of all the different filaments that they have available so each one of them is labeled what kind it is like this one's pla basic and it has the part number to it so you can find it easily i'm not sure if this is actual print it looks like molded plastic yeah it is molded but yeah pretty much the representation of the different colors and materials that are available from bamboo lab so yeah this gives you a better idea of what it actually looks like before you purchased the filament so it looks like we've updated successfully very nice 
and everything's been seamless so far with this printer. So we're gonna be loading in some bamboo filament, PLA basic, to do our first multicolor, or yeah, I guess multicolor, since we're all using PLA. One thing I'm not too sure about is what color should go where, as this is my first time using it, but I'm just gonna randomly put them in each one, and then we'll figure that out. But yeah, I guess I'll just start over here, so it's easier to see. Yeah, so this is gonna be number three over here on the front, and you're gonna to wanna to put where the filament rolls out onto the inside. So you're rolling it out to the extruder right here. Well, actually, this one's on the inside. The three one is closer to the middle. So yeah, but we're just gonna simply fit the spool onto the spool holder, and it's gonna kind of lock in there. I don't know if I can twist this enough to show you guys, but yeah, underneath there, on number three, which is on the inside, so we're gonna to need to push the extruder button on this right here to release the arm so I can go in. Okay, so I grabbed it, it's actually pulling it in itself. Wow, that's cool, so I guess it knows how much it needs to push it through. It got to about right here, so it didn't go all the way. We'll let it do what it's gotta do. And so the number three light is on now because it does have filament. So there are little motors inside that do push the filament through, like an extruder motor. So yeah, pretty sophisticated system here. And we're gonna load it up, I got white here. Put that on this side, which is number two. That's gonna be on the inside here, and it's feeding this through here now. Pretty awesome. So this thing's getting kind of heavy. And it is a little bit flimsy. I guess understandable as kilograms of spools are heavy. So here we have also a PLA basic, but this one is brown, which is quite interesting. And the spool is different too. These are clear and this one's more like a off-white or light, light gray. When they do come new, you do peel it here, the tape from the spool, and then you can either cut it or take the tape off either way. Probably cutting it is easier. And we'll put this brown as number four and feed that through and it grabbed it and for our last one a little more exciting which is orange color or it's kind of like a hot orange I guess and we're gonna put this one as number one all right so it's pulling it in so this is my first time using an AMS, so I might do a few things that are incorrect, but we'll try to figure it out here. You guys probably can't see the screen too well, but I'm gonna click on filament, see what it shows me now. Okay, so it's actually showing me four rolls. I don't know how, but it knows the color of each one. All right, well, that's kind of weird. I'm a little perplexed because it must have some kind of sensor inside that knows the color, or maybe I'm missing something, but yeah, really impressed that it knows each color. All right, well, that's really interesting and quite impressive. So let's see if we have any kind of files here to print that are multicolor. We do have this panda here that looks like multicolor, but I guess let's click on it and see what happens. So we do have a new tab here that says use AMS and it's selected. The only issue is our panda might turn out a little funny because we didn't slice it so it would be interesting to see what colors are used for the panda. And before I start that print let's go ahead and take off this spool here. And actually the whole spool holder just pops right off. Uh, very simple and it also comes with extra organizing clip and the tube for the single spool printing if you want to do that. Alright so it looks like everything is ready so I'm just gonna click next. It's telling me here a few things that I don't completely understand. Oh, okay, so it's showing me the colors of what the panda should be. So two is white, three is black, and then the blue is missing, which should be somewhere. So we didn't do blue. Maybe we can change the blue to orange. That would be interesting. So maybe, can we do that? Okay, so we select that and then we select one. There we go. So basically you choose the colors you want for each of the parts of the printer. So I guess when you slice it in the slicer, it'll make a lot more sense. But it's pretty cool. They, they still give us the option to choose what colors are going to be used for what. So the machine knows the colors, which is the impressive part to me. Or at least I wasn't expecting that. So let's go ahead and click on print. All right, we'll click print and there we go. It's starting. And according to the little preview there, I think the blue is his eyes, so it should be fine as orange. But yep, it's going to do its usual thing. Raise you guys up a bit so maybe we can see a little better what's going on here. Yeah, it's just doing bed leveling now and it should get to the interesting part here shortly. This seems to be kind of snagging here on the edge. Maybe instead of the cables kind of pushing towards the back, I should have made it made them where they flow more towards the front. It's probably something to consider there. Let's see here, maybe we can lower this. There we go, I think that's better. Maybe not, it's still going over the edge here. Here we should get some kind of purge on the side, which might be black, as the panda is black on the bottom, looks like, according to the preview there. But yeah, this is really exciting. All right, so it's white. So it's pulling it in. And I can see it just entered the head. 
and now the extruder took over we can kind of see it spinning there and it is actually purging so I had black in there before so it's pushing that out and there comes out the white I can see it all right it's popped out and it's actually starting well actually no I guess it's doing the flow calibration all right now it's actually printing and there it goes wow all right well I can't wait to see when it changes the colors I guess it's probably gonna go from white to black next and back and forth till eventually it'll get to the blue which is the eyes and maybe something else we'll see but they will be orange as we chose that well yeah guys again very impressive just how everything works so seamlessly so let's let the panda print and we'll see if we can catch a color change here shortly well, I guess it's doing it right now. So it's cutting the filament. Now it's pulling it back. And there goes the black. Wow. <laughs> Super impressive. So the extruder got it. Now it's pulling it in. So it might be a little premature to say, but I feel like this might be the best multi-material system here that I've used, and especially for the price. So yeah, very impressed with the A1 combo here. Okay, so it's going to make a purge block also. That's interesting. So even though it is purging on the side, it's also making a purge block. I guess just to make sure that the color is completely out, especially between white and black, which kind of makes sense because sometimes you can't get all of the black out of the white perfectly unless you flow it quite a bit. Either way, it's doing its thing and our panda is coming along. And we can see here on top of the AMS on number three, it's blinking as that's the one that's flowing through right now and printing. So one thing I didn't realize is that this is a pretty long print of seven hours and two minutes left. So it looks like we're changing color again. The black is coming out and the white is going in. All right. So it is going to purge the white here on the purge block also. It definitely does use up more filament than I would like, but I guess that is, again, at the expense of perfection. And maybe the machine does know how much it needs to purge. But yeah, seven hours later, we should have a panda. All right, so our panda finished, but not without some drama. And let's see how long it took. So it did take seven hours and 15 minutes, just like it predicted. But what's interesting is about halfway or so, the power went out and so the printer shut down and I was actually away. And when I came back, I was expecting the panda to be released from the build plate, but it actually held up and I didn't touch it and just continued the print. Now, by continuing it, for some odd reason, it started printing offset and then we're Weirdly enough, started printing correctly again later on, which is a little bizarre, but yeah, that's what ended up happening. And also another thing that I totally did not expect is how much waste we will have just from this print. So we have all of this poopies here or whatever you want to call them. And on top of that, we also have a purge block. And here on the purge block, you guys can kind of see where the power went out, which was about halfway and how it's offset. Weirdly enough, looks like only on the X axis. Definitely surprised about how much filament we used, which is 213 grams total to print the Panda. So let's go ahead and look at it. It's still stuck to the build plate. Actually, it's stuck very well. It does pop right off as expected. And even though this thing was offset, it still turned out incredible. And we can see on the face here, the eyes that we chose to be orange instead of the blue, which turned out perfect. So yeah, if we were looking for perfection, this is absolutely it because going from black to white is very hard as you need to purge it very well. And here kind of we can see the offsets as when the printer did turn off and then started printing to the side a bit. But what's interesting, it corrected itself higher up, went back to where it's supposed to be, which is kind of odd. But yeah, this thing's flexible. We have great detail here on the paws. Again, there was an offset here, but if we ignore that, look how clean the white and black is, even on these small intricate details. Same thing here for the fingers on the hands.
So yeah, this is a really cool print. Their hands are kind of made where they can hang off something, which is kind of cool. Really exciting here for the AMS. A little bit unexpected on how much actual filament we're wasting with the purging, or I guess I can't really call it wasting as it's changing colors. But as far as the AMS itself, not a single hiccup. Everything worked. It pulls the filament out with its own motors as it cuts it here. Seems to have plenty of power for that. And then pushes it in into the extruder that grabs it and does the color change and purge and print. So yeah pretty incredible and again i'm pretty blown away with how seamless everything is 